I'm Girish Menon. I'm the Chief Executive of Stir Education UK, and I'm based in London. Stir Education was started in 2012. Our aim is to improve learning outcomes for children working with government education systems. We do that by supporting education systems to reignite intrinsic motivation so that every child, every teacher, and every education official is motivated to learn and improve. Uh, so our vision is of a world where teachers love teaching and children love learning. Currently, we work in India and Uganda. In India, we are in three states. In Uganda, we are in 38 districts, going up to an additional 46. And next week, we'll be launching our new program in Indonesia. And soon, we should be launching our program in Ethiopia. Stir believes that education is government's responsibility and governments spend millions of dollars over the years through public education system. In many countries, they do it through their programs for universal education. What we do is to make that investment efficient and effective. So we do not set up our bespoke programs. All our investments are with and through the government education system so that the system can be more effective and more efficient, which is why at the rate at which we reach out and at the rate at which we have been able to scale up our programs, we're able to reach children at a cost of just under a dollar a year. The biggest impact we have seen is the manner in which the Delhi government in India and the Ugandan government have embedded our approach of behavior change in the government system. And I'd again like to underline that this is not STIRS impact, but it's the impact of the government education system that we were a catalyst and a facilitator for. And we have had external reviews done by the former Department of International Education of the government of UK, and also by UNESCO's IIEP, which is the International Institute for Education Planning. And their research shows that the approach that we had promoted are now deeply embedded within the government education system, which has meant that teachers are able to teach better, give more time to teaching, and it has had a positive impact on the learning outcomes of children. Very importantly, it has also changed and transformed the relationship between teachers and officials and teachers' own sense of agency and autonomy. This year, we are celebrating 10 years of STIR, and we are delighted to say that in these 10 years since 2012, we have reached out to 200,000 teachers through whom we have reached out to 6 million children across 104 districts of India and Uganda. Uh, in terms of highlights, in every place, it's slightly different. In the state of Karnataka, for instance, in India, where we are in 17 districts, the government now wants us to scale up to all the 34 districts. In Delhi, for instance, we are in a position where just after five years, we can now hand over the program to the government and walk away next year because everything that STIR is doing has now been captured and it's being taken forward by the government's own lifelong learning unit. So that's a huge vote of sustainability for us. And in Uganda, we are now scaling up our interventions to an additional 46 districts in partnership with the Association of School Head Teachers of Uganda, which just shows the way the, they value the program and they really want to take it up to scale. What is really important for businesses is on partnerships and collaboration. Nobody can achieve a social objective or an environmental objective on their own. So the first advice that I would have is to build those partnerships and collaboration, find out allies, be it in the private sector or the public sector who are aligned to the mission and the values so that together you can bring about a massive change. The second advice is to learn constantly. We believe in iterative improvement because there are so many mistakes that we make along the way. Learn from those mistakes, learn from those failures, let those failures not take you or blow you off course, 
but find out what went wrong and try to learn those lessons and set it right. And the third thing is always try to understand the value you're creating for society. It's not enough to have a perception of something good that's happening. Try to measure it, get the evidence, and be able to be generous enough to share that evidence so that others can amplify it. So the first thing I would say is try to be clear of what you want to do. Uh, authenticity is really important. Authenticity and integrity go together. Uh, sometimes you find people uh, changing their course because they feel that that's a better way to attract finances or resources, or that's a better way of positioning oneself. Uh, don't move away from what you fundamentally believe in. You need to have the courage of conviction. If you have the courage of conviction, and if you persevere with that, you can see those changes and people will come flocking to you. So that's the first thing that I'd like to say. And the second thing is, think very clearly about who you're communicating with and what you're communicating about. A lot of it is about the stories that we say. A lot of it is about the narrative that we say. Sometimes we do get caught in technical jargon and therefore you lose out on audiences. In, in any social enterprise, you need a very wide variety of people to come along with you. They are your general public, they might be teachers, they might be community leaders, they might be politicians or people who can uh, invest in your enterprise, speak a language that everybody can understand without changing what you actually do. That's your authenticity. That's your integrity. Last year, we released our new strategy. It's called Innovate, Advocate, and Motivate. Uh, it's a strategy that takes us to 2025. So it's a strategy that is developed in the context of the COVID pandemic and the COVID recovery, while also being conscious of issues of climate change and conflict. So what we're trying to look at is how do we position ourselves as a credible organization in the education sector that can help children to navigate this increasingly complex and difficult world. By 2025, we aim to reach to 25 million children across six countries. As I said earlier, we are already in India and Uganda. We will be launching our program in Indonesia in the last week of March, early April. And in the next couple of months, uh, by this summer, we'll be starting our program in Ethiopia. We soon have plans to start work in Brazil, hopefully by the end of 2022. And in 2023, we'll be scoping out opportunities to work in Egypt. So by 2025, the aspiration is to reach out to 25 million children in six countries. I think social enterprise has got a massive potential of unlocking what communities and people are here to do. Uh, there are people who are passionate about business. There are people who are passionate about the social environment they're in. There are people who are passionate about the broader environmental issues. Social enterprise has the opportunity to bring all of them together, unleash the potential. So then you're not just creating profits, which is very important for the economy, but you're also looking at issues of equity and environment. So it's about how can businesses look at all the three E's. It's about the economic considerations. It, it's about equity so that we are working towards a more equitable society. And of course, it's about having a better environment because our planet is clearly in danger. I'm very excited that STIR is included in this year's Social Entrepreneur Index. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a mark of recognition of what STIR has done in the past, but very importantly, it helps us connect with other peers. At STIR, we value learning a lot, and we look at this as a major opportunity for us to learn from what other peers, other social entrepreneurs have done, uh, gain from their insights, and see how we can build those partnerships. Uh, perhaps we don't know some of them, perhaps some of them don't know us. Uh, this is an opportunity where we can come together on a platform, get to know each other better, and see how we can forge lasting partnerships. So it's really very exciting and hugely encouraging for the entire team who has been working with STIR across India and Uganda.